Do you think the students who you were with today uh, are doing the right thing or the parents are doing the right thing by allowing them to leave school, bunk off school, stop their education in order to join, the, join this march? Well, I think these students out there today were sort of answering these questions with lots of their signs. One that, that really struck me in the gut were, because it reflects how many, so many of them are feeling is no time for learning when the Arctic is burning. Another one was what is the point of education if we don't have a future? These are young people who are grasping their own future, taking control of their own lives, saying we're not going to let uh, the adults, the, the older generations, do this to us. We're going to take control. And, of course, if you look at the skills they're learning, they're learning an enormous number of skills in organisation, organisational skills, in organising these events, the skills in you know, getting up and public speaking. I heard in Sheffield a couple of climate strikes back, a 13-year-old absolutely wonderfully got up in front of 600 people on the town hall steps and said how her history teacher that morning had said, wouldn't she have been better off revising for the history exam? And she said, no, because I want a future. Natalie, that, do, you accept, do you accept, though, that here in the UK, we should actually be proud of everything we're doing to cut carbon? We're leading the Western world. We're leading the developed world. If you look at the carbon dioxide emissions per capita, in this country, it's just 5.99. In the US, it's 15.53. So shouldn't we actually be very happy with how we're doing. We're doing great. We are leading the world when it comes to a green revolution. And why don't we celebrate that instead of constantly bashing ourselves for it? Because we're doing better than any other developed country. And I don't think that message is clear to the students. Uh, I, first of all, that's not true. In 2008, we could indeed celebrate. And in fact, it was interesting at Katowice, the uh, British stand. This was the climate talks last year in Poland. The British stand, the top line they were celebrating was that 2008, Climate Change Act. That was an act from a decade ago. It did indeed leave the world a decade ago. But, you know, now we have a target of 2050 for carbon neutral. That's 15 years behind a number of the Scandinavian countries. Uh, we, that's not climate leadership. Well, 2030, the, the government has committed to decarbonising British electricity altogether. Shouldn't we celebrate that? very slow again on, in, in terms of developed global global norms. We should be doing much better than well, that. Not compared to uh, the US or China. I mean, isn't the issue with those countries? It's not with us. We're doing uh, great. The it, pressure has to go on the US and China to make the change. Uh, comparing us with the US is um, you know, setting an extraordinarily low bar. And China, of course, you know, per capita emissions are still vastly lower than ours. Uh, and you know, it more than 90% of the world's electric buses are in China. Um, how many electric buses are you seeing in the UK? You know, I, I go around, around, around particularly England quite a lot. Uh, I don't see many electric buses. When I go to the continent, I see electric buses everywhere. You go to cities like Antwerp, which has an in, essentially car-free centre uh, with little electric buses to run around for people for whom mobility is a problem. Well, so, do you know, you know what? I think, that I, Natalie, morning, I think, you, you I think we're doing well. Bus. I think we're doing well. 29.3% was the portion of our electricity provided by renewable energy up uh, in 2017, up from 24.5% the year before, notably higher than America. And also, do you know, notably higher than the EU. About 10% higher than the EU. So celebrate what we're doing. We're doing great. We're getting behind this. We all want climate change to stop. But we, it has to be done in a sustainable way that isn't going to take us back to some sort of primitive, uh, pre-capitalist uh, time. And I think that's what this extreme organisation is trying to do. And I think when the students realise it means they won't be able to get on a flight for their gap year to Thailand or to Australia, and they're going to have to go like Greta Thunberg on a yacht for six weeks, maybe, just maybe, they're going to think, you know what, what we're doing is sensible and it's measured. There's nothing going backwards about renewable energy, about offshore wind, about solar. There's nothing backwards about focusing on walking and cycling and catching good, reloyable, convenient trains. I agree. Storing global, agree. good local bus services, which have been absolutely all of that. trashed but we're doing it. across the UK. Uh, we're doing no, it. No, we're not. But the bus services are going massively backwards and have been shut down enormously and have disappeared from large parts of England. Um, you know, those bus Do you know what? I mean, just wish, Natalie, Natalie, Natalie I just wish sometimes. Then, I've just presented you some great statistics. I appreciate your passion. And everything you do. But do you know what? I just wish sometimes you could give us a pat on the back. Do you know what I mean? Because actually, we're changing a lot. 
We no longer use plastic in the way we do. We're changing the way that we travel. We're changing the electricity. And all you want to do is constantly lecture and scaremonger. Why don't you just congratulate us sometimes and say, you know what? Thank you for the change that people are making in this country. So much more than in China or the US. But you're always putting us down. Well, you know, I was actually congratulating Great Western Railway this morning because uh, I was drawing the contrast from two years ago um, when I was actually on the BBC complaining about the fact that they refused to give me a coffee in a reusable cup. And I was indeed congratulating them this morning because uh, not only did I get my coffee in a reusable cup without a murmur, but I got a, actually got a discount on, the, uh, on that as a result. Um, so, you know, that's in two years, that's a small exactly. amount of progress. Even I However, have given up my plastic straws. <laughs> well, well done, you. Thank you. Now, there you see, go. See, see, okay, we're going to end that on a positive note. <laughs> I didn't go to school today because, to me, I value my future more than one day of missed education. How do your parents and teachers feel about that? My parents are incredibly supportive. They know that I am fighting for my future, and they know that at the end of the day, this is what matters more. And what about your teachers? My teachers are also very supportive of what I do. Um, I get sent lots of messages from them um, about articles relating to what's happening right now. Do you know about this organisation Fridays for the Future that are behind the global climate strike? Um, Fridays for Future are not behind the climate strike in the UK. The UK climate strikes are run by the UK Student Climate Network. Well, they are behind the international global climate strike, which is taking place today. Yes, they are. And obviously these marches are part of it because do you, I, I just feel like a lot of what they are wanting is quite extreme, is he? Well, at the end of the day, what we're facing is quite extreme, isn't it? We are facing a global crisis, a catastrophe that has the potential to wipe out all of human civilization. Millions of people are already dying because of the climate crisis. That, in millions. my opinion, is millions. extreme. Millions, Millions of people, of people are, are currently dying because of the climate crisis. Where's the, where's the evidence? Refugees. Where's the evidence for that? The evidence is if you look at hurricanes in Mozambique, where which were linked, which were proved to be one of the first natural disasters explicitly Millions. caused by climate change. The people in the Bahamas who are being killed right now, the people who have lost their homes. Oh, absolutely, it's terrible, but it, but it's not millions of people, is it? Millions of people are at risk of death because of climate. At risk, OK, that's a very different thing. Now, do, do, do you know what we're doing here in the UK, what the government's doing? It's pretty good, actually. We're, we're ahead of the world. If you look at our carbon emissions per capita, 5.99 in the US, they're 15.53. Uh, we have already committed to reducing our 1990 carbon emissions 80%. By uh, 2015, we were the first major developed economy to make such a pledge. Pretty good, right? First of all, the UK is on track to miss their Paris Agreement goals, which, in my opinion, not that great. Second of all, the UK has a historical burden to be the best at deindustrializing, to be the best at combating carbon emissions, because we were the first country to have an industrial revolution. We were the first country to start commercially burning coal and putting it into the atmosphere. Oh, so and it's our fault. Okay, it's our fault. We need to be the first country that takes a stand against this because at the end of the day, the UK has higher carbon per capita emissions than China, where people are still living in rural underdeveloped areas, than a lot of underdeveloped countries which haven't contributed massively to climate change. However, they are the people who don't have the infrastructure, who have the climate that is going to affect them the most, and they're going to be the first people to be affected. Are you going to not travel the world, is he? Or are you going to do it like Greta Thunberg on yachts and container ships like Natalie Bennett was suggesting six weeks to her Australian homeland? I'm not talking about what individuals need to do. No, no, but just out I'm of interest. I personally, I'm trying to reduce my flying as much as possible. That's not always an option for me as a student who has family in another country. However, at the end of the day, what needs to change most is we need systemic change. We need change. So I can still go back to New Zealand on my little flight. Of course, we want people to be flying less. We want them to be eating less meat. However, for a lot of people, those oh, gosh, things are unavoidable. Well. And at the end of the day, we need to make a system that is more accessible so people can make those choices more easily. OK. All right. Well, good luck today. I hope you didn't miss out on too much schoolwork. That's Thank Izzy you so Warren. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely brilliant. Very articulate, impressive 15-year-old who is on uh, the strike today. To be honest, she's, she's as good as Greta Thunberg, Izzy Warren.
I think she's a very good, uh, very good proponent for that movement. Even though I disagree with everything she says, I think what an impressive 15-year-old. So thank you, Izzy. It's absolutely brilliant to hear from you.